started looking at the board and trying to guess the words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't ask you to do that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> what was your first reaction to that slide when you just looked at it? I can see she was going to. Laura needs another coffee. <laughs> You've this broken the projector, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I must have done something like that. Yeah. What was your first reaction when you looked at it? But is it quite easy to do that? All right, uh, you may try to write it upside down if I hold you upside down or you may turn the board upside down. There are ways to do that, but I use Active Inspire. Here comes the technology to help and support learning in my language classroom. And this is what I'm going to do. I don't, I'm not going to ask you to guess the words. We'll come to that one. Have you guessed any, any of the words? Which one is that? Coherence is the top one. No, I know. Well done. Discord. Thank you. Discord. It's related to writing, by the way. <laughs> the rest of the... No worries. <laughs> we'll come to that one after. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, so, the, quite challenging, isn't it? Like, you have to turn your head upside down and try to think about what the word might be. It's quite... But it's also, in some ways, fun. And as you come into the classroom, without asking anything, just put something like that. On the slide, you draw attention of your students straight to that board without any difficulties, and they are all focused on that board. And that's what I'm talking about here today. So my talk is about how to use technology. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word use, I would say integrate technology in your lesson seamlessly so that it fits into the part of the jigsaw puzzle, so that your lesson is quite memorable and um, fun. Also, I use the word creativity, and that would be my talk. Um, if I remember, previous speakers, they all talked about um, corpus. There's one we talked about corpus. He talked about some other things. And also, um, the first speaker talked about using um, an app to help with their speaking. So we can't really get away from technology at all. It is around us, within us. My first reaction when I went to Saudi Arabia, by the way, I'll talk about this one later. When I went to Saudi Arabia to teach for British Council, this is the first thing that struck me real seriously, that the kids are coming, younger learners, they all have phones, not like my phone. Their phones are quite expensive, you know, top of the range. And using uh, them in the classroom, and I was finding it quite difficult to handle the situation. It's not that I have a problem with my classroom management, but I was thinking how to incorporate that behavior into a learning situation. I mean, give them the autonomy, give them the ownership of their learning. And then, during my time while I was doing my Delta, I, my third module three, I was uh, preparing a um, blended learning course, and I had to incorporate apps, tools, and uh, I looked at blogs for like Nikki Hockley or Nick Pitchy, um, wonderful things, wonderful resources available everywhere. But which one to use? How to integrate them in the lesson? That comes to the point. There are easy ways you can do that. For example, we use MS Word, a video, PowerPoint. Um, don't worry about that. I've got a handout here. The, the, the activities that can use, that you can use in your classroom using. MS Word, PowerPoint, and projector, these are all listed here. There are around 20 or 12 activities with how to do and all the step-by-step -step gui step -step guidelines here. But what I want to focus on, some sort of high end of the technology that is available online, and that's something to do with smartphones and apps. So these also, you know, Undoubtedly, these are the things that you get out of that. But let's look at these two apps that I always use, Padlets and apps. How many of you used Padlets and QR codes? Yeah. And how did you use that? Um, just a brainstorming. Brainstorming, like, good yeah, idea. Any other yeah. ideas that you have Padlets for? Or QR codes, perhaps? Mm. Have you used QR <coughs> codes? No. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about QR codes? Or, mm. or we'll talk about this now then. The QR code is a code which can combine your URL, a plain text, and so many other things. But normally I use it to give you the link. If you scan the code now, it will take you to a page right now. 
I wouldn't ask you to do that, but how, what I did with my students when I was in Saudi Arabia, that's the first time I came across QR code. I thought, all right, that's it. I'm going to use it to improve their writing. So one day, I, that was the Mother's Day, so I went to the classroom to the younger learners, and I asked them, okay, think about it. Think about your, you know, think of your mum or mother. Think about what comes to your head when you think of your mother. And I would like you to scan the code and go there and write a sentence about your mother. And this is what they came up with. You may have seen, can you see them from there? Aww. But it's not finished yet. They've written their sentences. Now, then I said, okay, in groups, could you put them in order to just to make a meaningful structure of the whole thing? So they all work together in their groups. There are lots of peers, of course, that they're shuffling because you can move them around. Like if you have a smartphone, you can just push one line above another, and you know you can put them wherever you want to just create a nice structure of the whole writing. So then, after their work, group work or teamwork, they came up with this one. So think about the structure before and this one. Now this one looks like a little a poem. Thank you very much. So that's what happened during the time. And then afterwards, one student, because you have the ability to use Padlet for so many other things, so he decided to add that image. <laughs> so now the whole thing came up as a wonderful poem for the students. So here comes the point. We use our brainstorming before writing this one. They thought about it, what they think of their mom. And then they wrote a sentence. They also corrected each other's sentences. And then they shuffled them and placed them one above another to create that piece of poem. And afterwards, I printed a copy for each student, and they took it and gave it to their mums. Aww. So we can incorporate, you can integrate technology in the classroom in a meaningful way. And it creative. I mean, that's what I always say. Be creative. You will find there are hundreds of millions of, well, I would say millions of apps available, tools available. But it's not that... Oh, should I use this? Because normally what happens to the teachers, they take one of the tool, okay, I'm going to have a bit of fun, and then we use it as a one-off thing of my lesson, and it doesn't really seamlessly blend with the rest of the lesson. So that my question always comes to when I give um, talk or encourage other teachers to follow the same examples, I always say, look, think about it, how are you going to incorporate, how are you going to use um, this technology that's, that's available around us in your language classroom? Now, think about what else can we do using QR code and Padlet. I'm going to give you a little example now. Do you have your phone, smartphones right now? Mm -hmm. Do you have QR code reader? Mm -hmm. Or if you know, it doesn't matter, like whoever has got the QR code reader, could you scan the code? If you can. It's, it's, a, it's a simple, simplest app called QR code reader. You just Scan it, and it will take you to a web page. Mm. And I'd like you to write a sentence there about the problems that you're facing with your students in terms of technology. And like, what are the things that you face? I know you mentioned that they use, um, while you're giving, talking to them, they use smartphone a lot. You know. But apart from that, could you mention some of the other things that you face in your class, language classroom? It gives you an option to go Browse the website. Could you go to the website and there's a plus button at the bottom right hand corner? Click on that and type your problems. And I'll show you. Could I just go I to the website? I'm just bridging on my phone. I can get that every group of the Sorry, 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 sorry. So someone is already typing there, I can see them. So some of you already started typing. And it's, it's a kind of real time, it's a real time. Yeah, I'm going to give you a QR code. Can I make it bigger? I've got one minute left, two minutes left. So 
It is, it is, there are endless possibilities <laughs> to use this in the writing for, to improve the writing. Particularly my CAE students, they do not like writing in the classroom. So I said, okay, all right, you don't like writing in the classroom, fine. One day I put a bottle, you know, the empty bottle and a message in it and I drew that on the board. I said, look, uh, think about the message in the bottle. And so they were very creative thinking about something else. Then I gave them the code, could you go there and write your message? They all went in and wrote a wonderful piece of writing. These are CAA students. So then what we did, I placed the whole board in front of them. So could you, because they didn't write their names on top of that. So you don't know who wrote which piece. Mm -hmm. And they started correcting each other. So there was a lot of peer support coming in. It was fantastic to see them. They are correcting each other's error. And before you step in. So as you said, like, give them their authority, learn autonomy, give them the ownership of their learning. And they took it seriously. So there are so many things we can do using QR code and, and uh, Padlet. Is one of them is we can do jigsaw reading. This is what I always do. Rather than give them the task to read in while they're sitting down, because I want them to stand up sometime for the kinesthetic line. It's quite good to move around, and you know, sometimes after two two hours, lengthy lesson can be very tedious for students. So make them stand up, do something, walk around. Rather than posting uh, text on the wall, I put post QR codes. Go and text it, scan it, and then find out what's written there, and then share your opinions with your partners, rather than directly just reading it. Just do some work to get your reward. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, you can do brainstorming using Padlet. Peer correction, as I mentioned earlier. Plenty of mingle activities. The things I always do, like first class, and the first day get to know each other, you ask, thank you. As a two minutes later. Um, that's another technological feature that the year has done now. Um, Laser eyes needed, Laura. <laughs> so, what happens finally, uh, what I normally do at the first lesson, get to know each other. I ask them, okay, could you write three adjectives about yourself on the board? So, they all scan the code and go and write three adjectives. Okay, then come all in the middle and find out who wrote yeah. which one. That's it done. Simplest thing that you can do. You can trigger anything using Padlet and QR code. You don't need to go for millions of millions of apps available. Look at something else that which can help you in the classroom. And this is my point here today. There are many apps, tools available, but look, give it a go, try. I know some people are against technology, but smartphones are there to help or aid our learning. So there's another website before I finish, I'm gonna show you, and that's it. And this website, I already placed it there, it's called classroomscreen.com. Have you used this one? It's a wonderful website called classroomscreen.com. And you have, that clock is ticking there, you can have a timer, you can set up 12 minutes here, and then you can trigger, you know, and also you can, to manage your classroom, if the noise level is too high, just put this light on. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of getting a bit better than do this one, and then finally, it's quite interesting to us that they develop. And also you can have um, uh, Pictionary, you call it, so you can, students can challenge each other drawing something, and then you guess what they're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, draw on the board. So there are various ways you can use um, these tools to improve or enhance the learning in the language classroom. Final words, be creative. Because you know, there are ways you can do that. I mean, you don't need to follow the same pattern all the time. Tweak and change it sometimes. Balanced approach, not too <coughs> often, not too little. Just you know, sometimes you have to, a tiny bit, and that would do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Support for you for two hours lesson. And the timing, make sure that when you introduce the technology, is the most important timing you can also introduce. That's it, thank you.